The topic for discussion is defense mechanisms of the gingiva. The gingival tissue is constantly subjected to mechanical as well as bacterial insults. In order for the host to defend against these insults, there are certain defense mechanisms of the gingiva. So these are the gingival epithelium, gingival crevicular fluid or the sulcular fluid, leukocytes and the saliva. So we have already learned about the gingival epithelium and the topic of gingiva. So the gingival epithelium is no longer a passive component. It's an active component and plays a very important role in the host defense mechanism. Previously, it was thought that the gingival epithelium is passive. It only forms a mechanical barrier function or protective barrier function. But it is no longer a passive component. It's an active component. It integrates the innate immunity and adaptive immunity. It plays a very important role in the host defense mechanism. Next, we will see about the gingival crevicular fluid or the sulcular fluid. The presence of this gingival crevicular fluid has been known since 19th century, but its composition and its possible role in the oral defense was studied during the 1950s. I want you all to understand an important experiment or research done. So, some investigators, they have introduced a filter paper into the gingival sulcus of the dogs. And these dogs were injected intramuscularly fluorescein, the fluorescein dye. So, once this filter paper was introduced into the gingival sulci of the dogs, this fluorescein was recovered onto the paper strips within 3 minutes. So, this means that there is passage of fluid from the bloodstream through the tissues and finally exiting via the gingival sulcus and this fluid is collected onto the filter paper. Right? So, later Brill confirmed this presence of gingival crepicular fluid even in humans. The previous experiment was done in dogs. Later, Brill has stated that gingival crepicular fluid is present in humans also. And later, further research stated that this gingival crepicular fluid plays a very important role in detection in the diagnosis of periodontal disease, whether periodontitis is present or not. And another important point is that it helps in prediction of the periodontal disease, whether the person will have the periodontal disease in future or not. So the composition of the gingival crevicular fluid is very important in order to know the diagnosis as well as the prediction of the periodontal disease. Next, we will see the methods of collection of gingival crevicular fluid. So this gingival crevicular fluid is very scarce. So because of the scarcity of the material, it has become the most difficult hurdle and there are different methods of GCF collection. So in the first picture, in the A picture, you, were, you can see the intracellular method in which the filter paper strip or the absorbing paper strip is placed into the sulcus. Okay, it is placed within the sulcus, whereas B and C pictures represent the extra crevicular method in which in the B picture you can see that the filter paper is placed just at the entrance of the pocket. Okay, the C picture also represents the extra crevicular method in which the absorbing paper strip is placed over the pocket entrance, right? The intracellular method was given by Brill, whereas the extracellular method was given by Lowe and Home Pedersen. So, this intracellular method, since the filter paper strip is placed into the gingival sulcus, it produces some amount of irritation. Okay, because of this irritation only, there will be triggering of the fluid. So, that's why in order to minimize this irritation, Low and Home Pedersen were the authors who gave the extracellular method in which the paper strip is placed just at the entrance or it is placed over the pocket entrance. Next, another method is pre-weight twisted threads. You can see in the picture that threads are placed into the gingival sulcus. So these are pre-weighed. That means you will be weighing the strips before and later you will be placing into the gingival sulcus. Later during calculation you will estimate the difference in between the already present weight of the thread and the thread which is placed into the gingival sulcus. So the difference between these two gives us the amount of the gingival crevicular fluid that is collected. Next method is using micro pipettes. So this micro pipettes usage will help us in collecting the GCF because of the capillarity. So there will be standard length and diameter tubes that are placed into the pocket. The content that is obtained in these tubes, in these capillary tubes will be centrifuged and later analysis will be done. The next method is using of the crevicular washings. So these crevicular washings can be used to study the GCF from clinically normal gingiva. 
so in this there will be an acrylic plate a hard acrylic plate that covers the maxilla and this covering will be made up of soft borders okay and there will be a groove which is following the gingival margins so in this there will be four collection tubes from which you will be collecting the gingival crevicular fluid and you will be analyzing it next we will see how to calculate the amount of gcf that is collected on the paper strip so it can be evaluated by two methods one is staining with ninhydrin and the second one is the periotron which is an electronic method so the wetted area once the paper strip absorbs the gcf it becomes wet right so this wetted area can be made more visible by staining with ninhydrin after staining with ninhydrin it can be measured planimetrically on an enlarged photograph or using a magnifying glass or a microscope so after staining you'll be analyzing it with the help of a microscope or a magnifying glass the second method is periotron very very important you can appreciate in the picture the periotron which is made by harco electronics which is developed by harco electronics and this measures the fluid that is collected on the perio paper that is the absorbing filter paper strip so because of the wetness of the filter paper this will affect the flow of electric current and because of which you can see in the picture there is a, a slot for the digital reading so because of the wetness of the strip there will be difference in the electric flow of the current and there will be reading which is seen so we can see a digital readout on the periotron so this periotron was developed by harco electronics I already stated that the amount of GCF collected is very small and there is scarcity of the material. So a strip of paper which is 1.5 mm wide and which is inserted 1 mm into the gingival sulcus of slightly inflamed gingiva absorbs about 0.1 mg of GCF in 3 minutes. This is fact. Okay, so it will absorb only 0.1 mg. So this this amount is very little, right? Next, we will see the composition of GCF. This includes individual proteins, specific antibodies and antigens, enzymes and the cellular elements. The cellular elements include desquamated epithelial cells, bacteria and the leukocytes, whereas the electrolytes include potassium, sodium and calcium. An interesting point here is that if the calcium and sodium concentrations are high, okay, then the inflammation is also high. Okay, so there is a positive correlation in between the content of the calcium and sodium with inflammation and also the so sodium potassium ratio also correlates with the inflammation. That is why measuring the composition of the GCF or measuring the components of the GCF helps us in the detection or prediction of the periodontal disease. This is what the statement means. So by measuring the components of the GCF, we are able to diagnose the disease and we are able to even predict whether the disease will be occurring in a particular individual or not. Next, we will see the organic compounds present in GCF. This includes carbohydrates and proteins. So remember that the glucose concentration from the gingival crevicular fluid is 3 to 4 times greater than the serum, whereas the protein concentration is less than that of the serum. These two points are very important from MCQ point of view. So the carbohydrate value will be 3 to 4 times greater than that from the serum, whereas the protein concentration is less when compared to their concentration in the serum. The other products include the metabolic and bacterial products which include the lactic acid, urea, hydroxyproline, endotoxins and the cytotoxic substances, hydrogen sulfide and antibacterial factors. There are also many enzymes detected in the GCF. These include acid phosphatase, alkaline phosphatase, amino peptidase, chondritin sulfatase. Remember that some of these enzymes are derived from the bacteria whereas some of these enzymes are derived from the host. So this gingival crevicular fluid is having both the host components and the bacterial components. The picture or the table which I am showing you is showing the enzymes of the bacterial origin. So in the next slide we are seeing that the glucose concentration is 3 to 4 times greater than that in the serum in GCF whereas the protein concentration is much less than that of the serum. So this uh, point I have already stated. 
Next, we will see the clinical significance of gingival crevicular fluid. As I have already stated, some of the components of GCF are correlating with inflammation like sodium, calcium and potassium. So, the amount of GCF is greater when there is inflammation. So, if the inflammation is greater, the amount is also greater or else both of them are at same level or proportional to each other. The GCF production is not increased by trauma from occlusion but it is increased by mastication of coarse foods tooth brushing, gingival massage, ovulation, hormonal contraceptives and smoking. So it has a concept of circadian periodicity wherein there is gradual increase in the gingival crevicular fluid from 6 am to 10 pm and later after this time the GCF flow will decrease and there is also a change with the female sex hormones. The female sex hormones will increase the vascular permeability because of which there is increase in the gingival crevicular fluid. That is why when there are some hormonal changes that is during ovulation by using the hormonal contraceptives and all there will be increase in the GCF flow. And because of smoking there will be an immediate transient but marked increase in the GCF flow for some period of time but there will be marked increase in the GCF flow and there will be increase in the gingival crevicular fluid production during the healing period after the periodontal surgery. Next we will see the drugs in gingival crevicular fluid. So some of the drugs are excreted through the GCF. So they might be used advantageously right. So these drugs are tetracycline and metronidazole. These are antibiotics right. So they can be used advantageously in periodontal therapy. Next we will see the leukocytes which are present in the dento gingival area. We already know that leukocytes are very important for host defense. So these leukocytes are not only seen when there is some infection or inflammation. These leukocytes are normally found in the clinically healthy gingiva. So these leukocytes include 91.2 to 91.5 percent of neutrophils, 8.5 to 8.8 percent .8 of mononuclear cells. Remember a very important MCQ here is the T cell to B cell ratio in the gingival crevicular fluid is 1 is to 3 whereas in case of peripheral blood this ratio is reversed it is 3 is to 1 okay and this leukocytes in the dento gingival area they form a major protective mechanism and they will prevent the extension of the plaque into the gingival sulcus. Always remember that leukocytes are present in germ-free adult animals also. So even in clinically healthy conditions leukocytes are present. Even in the presence of inflammation also the leukocytes are present. So they have a major protective mechanism and they have the phagocytic and killing capacity. So they form a very important defense mechanism of the gingiva. Next we will learn about the saliva. We already know that the salivary uh, secretions are protective in nature because they maintain the oral tissues in physiologic state. So the saliva has a major influence on the plaque because the saliva forms a mechanical cleansing action, right? It buffers the acids that are produced by bacteria. It controls the bacterial activity. So saliva has very important defense nature and it is very protective. So here we see the role of saliva in oral health. So because of glycoproteins and mucoids, it will help in lubrication as well as the physical protection. Because of its physical flow, it will cleanse. So it forms the mechanical cleansing action of the plaque. So because of its flow, it will clear the debris, it will clear the bacteria. Because of bicarbonate and phosphate, it will have a buffering action. It will buffer the acids that are produced by bacteria. Because of minerals and because of glycoprotein, pellicle it will maintain the tooth integrity and it has immunoglobulin A, lysozyme and lactoperoxidase. These will have a great antibacterial action. So the immunoglobulin A will control the bacterial colonization whereas the lysozyme will break the bacterial cell walls and the lactoperoxidase it will help in the oxidation of the susceptible bacteria. An important point an important MCQ here is the saliva will have greater amount of IgA whereas the gingival crevicular fluid will have greater amount of IgG, GCF, G. Remember that, okay? There are certain antibacterial factors in saliva other than these lysozyme and all. So these include inorganic factors and organic factors. In the organic factors, we see the lysozyme, lactoferrin, myeloperoxidase, lactoperoxide and agglutinins. Whereas in the inorganic factors, we have the ions, gases, sodium, potassium and calcium. 
there are certain salivary antibodies which include IgG, IgM and IgA out of which the predominant immunoglobulin in saliva is IgA whereas the predominant immunoglobulin in GCF is IgG. There are enzymes present in uh, saliva which include hyaluronidase, lipase, beta glucuronidase, chondritin sulfatase, aspartate aminotransferase, alkaline phosphatase. So the saliva and the GCF have lots and lots of enzymes present in them. There are also coagulation factors 8, 9 and 10 and also plasma thromboplastin antecedent present in saliva. The important point is that the saliva will have the desquamated epithelial cells just like the GCF and it will also have the leukocytes. These polymorphonuclear leukocytes will reach the oral cavity and they will exit through the lining of the gingival sulcus and they will enter into the saliva. Whatever the PMNs that are living so these living PMNs which are present in saliva are called as orogranulocytes. Okay, the rate of migration of these PMNs into the oral cavity is called as orogranulocytic migratory rate. Next, we come to the conclusion. The gingival tissues with their specialized relationship to the tooth surface constitute the major peripheral defense against the microbial infections that may lead to the periodontal disease. So in the defense mechanisms, we have seen the gingival epithelium which plays a very active role. Next, we have seen the gingival cravicular fluid or the salcular fluid. We have seen the leukocytes which are present in the dentro-gingival area. And finally, we have seen the saliva. The saliva and the GCF will also have these leukocytes, desquamated epithelial cells and enzymes which are all protective in nature and they will defend the host against the bacteria. The important questions from this topic are mostly from gingival cravicular fluid. So you need to know the methods of collection of gingival cravicular fluid, how to measure the amount of the GCF that is collected. You need to know the intracellular, extracellular methods, the amount. So from MCQ point of view, this periotron and uh, staining with ninhydrin, all these points are very important and the methods are also very important. And next important question is about the functions of the saliva. And from MCQ point of view, you need to know what orogranulocytes are and what is orogranulocytic migratory rate. Remember always that GCF plays an important role in diagnosis and it also plays an important role in prediction of the periodontal disease. So, if there will be any future periodontal disease is also predicted by gingival cravicular fluid composition. Thank you everyone for your patient listening and all the best.